Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, we're very excited uh, to explain the course-based programs uh, to you. And with that, I'll give it to Dr. Beattie. Hey, thank you. Well, welcome, everybody. My name is Tara Beattie, and I'm the Associate Dean of Graduate Science Education in the Cummings School of Medicine. I'm joined here today with Miranda Del Alba, the Director of Strategic Operations in the office, Marion Mildenberger, our team lead in the Graduate Science Education office, Calvin Lack and Natalie Wilkinson Houghton from the Faculty of Graduate Studies, as well as Tapia and Alicia, who are student representatives from the Masters of Pathologist Assistant Program. Before I would start, um, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the Blackfoot and the people of the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta, which includes the Sitsika, the Pekainai, the Kainai, and the Tutsina, and the Stony Nakoda First Nations, including the Chiniki, Bears Paw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. So welcome. You are here this morning for the Graduate Education Recruitment Webinar for Course-Based Programs in the Cummings School of Medicine. And what I'm going to do in the next half hour is explain to you, one, why you should consider graduate school, why you should consider graduate school at the University of Calgary, and more specifically, why you should consider going to graduate school in the Cummings School of Medicine. So first, why the University of Calgary? Well, as many of you already are aware, the city of Calgary is a community that is rich in opportunity. It has a vibrant arts and culture scene with world-class restaurants, very close to the Canadian Rockies, so great opportunity to go and explore some fantastic views in nature. Calgary is one of Canada's safest, cleanest, and sunniest cities, and it also has a wonderful array of options and resources for newcomers to our city. So I'm not sure where many of you are from, but I do want to highlight that the University of Calgary is a global intellectual hub located in Canada's most enterprising cities. In this spirited, high quality learning environment, students can thrive in programs that are based in research. By 2022, we will be recognized as one of Canada's top five research intensive universities that is fully engaged with the communities that we both lead and serve. So many of you would have heard of the University of Calgary's ISI strategy. And within that strategy, we have an integrated research and academic plans with the student experience and impacted being at the center of both. And what I wanna highlight is that students play an integral role in the eyes high strategy as they intersect both the academic and the research endeavors of the university. So the eyes high strategy has three foundational commitments. The first is to sharpen focus on research and scholarship. The second is to enrich the quality and breadth of learning. And the third is to integrate the university with the community. And across all of these, we weave the multifaceted student experience and cap campus culture throughout each of these foundational commitments. So what I'm trying to say here and highlight here is that the University of Calgary has a wealth of opportunities for you to come and pursue academic research. So I'm next gonna talk a little bit about the Cummings School of Medicine, which is um, just shown here. We have a high level of research funding and quality mentorship here at the CSM. And our students contribute meaningfully to the global research efforts that address grand challenges in the area of health. Our students also build bridges to the community and create real world change. And our students and our researchers at CSM are at the forefront of knowledge and discovery. Innovation is a hallmark of everything we do here and what we have to do in the future. And graduate programs within the CSM span the research priorities, both of our school, but also at the university. So here at the University of Calgary, we are creating the future of health through innovation, investigation, and discovery. 
And we create an environment that combines amazing mentorship courses and cutting edge opportunities to foster innovation in the health sciences. And what I would like to do right now is just show a short video highlighting the coming School of Medicine. to join one of the programs in the coming School of Medicine, you are going to be part of a broader University of Calgary community. All of our graduate students belong to the Faculty of Graduate Studies, even though their courses and their research and their practicums and experiential learning opportunities would take place in the coming School of Medicine. The Faculty of Graduate Studies has over 60 graduate programs with more than 1200 supervisors across campus and we currently have more than 6300 graduate students. In the Cummings School of Medicine, we have eight thesis based and three course based programs and it's the course based programs that we're here to discuss today. We have over 600 graduate students and over 400 supervisors. But before I start talking about why you should consider specific programs at the Cummings School of Medicine, I'd like to discuss some of the reasons that you might choose to go to graduate school. And many people consider getting graduate degrees for a number of different reasons. One might to be to obtain a new skill set. The second might be to join a new community of people. Third, for the advancement of knowledge. Or it might be a necessity for the job that you want in a desired field. It will improve your career and professional options and prospects. And last but not least, but more importantly, it may serve to satisfy your intellectual curiosity and drive your passion. Graduate school is exciting and it is more than simply taking courses or analyzing data. It's an advanced level of inquiry where you can generate new knowledge and answer questions that have never before been addressed. It is making connections to your community making connections to information and putting that information into a bigger picture in a broader context. It is being able to join a community of scholars and students who are excited about the field that you're going into as you are. Graduate students are at the core of many of our programs. And in my opinion, they drive the advancement and discovery of the school. So graduate students have a number of opportunities here at the Cummings School of Medicine. 
And while we offer both course-based and, and thesis-based programs, I'm going to focus today on our course-based programs. And overarching what we're looking for and what I want to stress is that at the Cummings School of Medicine, we strive to inspire research beyond traditional boundaries. And our innovative and unique course-based masters will highlight this. So one of our programs is the Masters of Biomedical Technology. And this program is unique and it bridges the academic and the corporate world. Students in the MBT program are exposed to a broad range of cutting edge biotechnical and business concepts. They are mentored from instructors, entrepreneurs, faculty, alumni, and industry leaders. And this program will provide students with the skills, knowledge, and experience that they need for successful careers, ranging from business to academia, to government, to biotech. And at the end of this presentation, I'll highlight where some of our graduates have gone. Our Master's of Biomedical Technology is a one-year degree, which also includes a 12-week practicum. Requirements to get into the MBT program are a four-year Bachelor of Science or equivalent. You need a minimum of a 3.3 GPA over the last uh, two years of study. Your application will involve two reference letters, a curriculum vitae, as well as a vision statement for why you were interested in joining the program. And the deadline for applications to the MBT program is May 1st for a September 1st start date. Our next program is the Master of Pathologist Assistant. In the Empath program, you will be developing a foundational knowledge in pathological sciences and practices through hands-on experience in, med in medical laboratories. Our Empath program at the University of Calgary is only one of two NACLs accredited programs in Canada, and it is designed to track graduates towards employment in pathology labs. And this program also allows our students to qualify for the American exams as well. Our Empath program is a two-year program, which includes 26 weeks of practicum experience in surgery, autopsy, pediatrics, as well as a faculty mentored research project. In order to apply to the Empath program, you require, again, a four-year bachelor, bachelor of Science or equivalent and a minimum of 3.3 in the last two years of study. You need two reference letters, a CV, and the ability to form, perform essential functions. And for this program, the application deadline is March 30th for a September 1st start. Our brand new program is a precision health program. And this has just been approved by the government of Alberta and is set to launch in the fall of 2021. If many of you have not yet heard, one of the key priority areas in the Cummings School of Medicine is precision health and precision medicine. And this is an educational program that strongly aligns with the foundational commitments here at the school. So what is a precision health program? This is an innovative program in a growing field that's designed to meet the professional development needs of current and future healthcare practitioners across Canada and internationally. This is a transdisciplinary program that will bring healthcare leaders, entrepreneurs, and educators together with this primary focus of improving healthcare. And this program is built for a broad audience of healthcare professionals. So this is a unique program and is not your typical master's program. And it's called a micro-credentialed program and it's in three specific steps. So I'm just gonna really briefly outline the pathway of this program. In the first year, you take a certificate in one of four specializations within the professional health program. And I'll discuss the specializations in just a moment. A certificate consists of four courses and it is taken in your first year. Once you've finished your first year certificate, in year two, you go on to the diploma in precision health, which is another four courses in a specialized area. 
In the last year, we are proposing a master's program, and this program is pending government approval right now, but we're hoping that it will be approved and launched by September of 2023. So those are the pathways of the program, but what are the specializations that we offer? We offer specializations in quality and safety leadership. So this largely focuses on quality and safety at a patient level. We have a stream that aims to educate the health professional education leaders of the future. We have a stream that focuses on precision medicine. So for many of you, that would be the omics of, of health and the omics of um, patient care, genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, and really looking at individualized signatures of someone's health. And last but not least, we have an innovation and entrepreneurship stream. So what do you need to get into the precision health program? Again, a four year bachelor of science or equivalent, a minimum of 3.3 GPA. This program also requires a CV. An application also must provide a vision statement and why you're applying to the program. The time commitment as it currently stands, this is a part-time program and each step of the program takes one year. So once the master's is approved, it will be a total of a three-year program. And the application deadline is April the 15th for a September 1st um, start. So in addition to the educational research and scientific skills you will acquire while being a graduate student, you will also learn how to be organized, communicate, multitask, think systematically, logically, and collaborate. And these are all valued skills that will help you excel in any future career areas, even if they're outside of the immediate topic that you have been studying. So where do our graduate students from these programs end up? Graduates from the MBT program have gone on to be senior policy analysts, CEOs, research, education and outreach coordinators, sales representatives, and global directors of clinical affairs. Our empath students who have a very defined end goal for their profession have ended up all across the country from St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver to the Foothills Hospital here in Calgary to Sunnybrook in Toronto, all the way to the IWK Health Center in Halifax. So what I want you to take home from this slide is that our students do very, very well in finding employment after their degree is completed. So one of the key priorities of the University of Calgary, as well as the Cummings School of Medicine, is enhancing the student experience. So how are we going to do that once you get here? Well, in our office, we have support for scholarship applications. We have professional development programs. We have a strong commitment to mental health and wellness for our graduate students. And if we were here in person, and if we have recruitment and orientation um, events in person, we always hand out these mental health first aid kits, which really tries to demonstrate our commitment to this aspect of student well being. We also have a commitment to equity, diversity, inclusion, accessibility, and anti racism. And we have a number of um, programs that promote inclusive research environments. We have a team of 12 support. Um, we have a support team of 12 in our graduate science education office that are here to help guide you through the program. We have a vibrant student community that provide mentorship events and social connections. And I also want to mention that each of the three programs that I've been discussing are open to both domestic and international students. And so leaving it off to talk about our vibrant student community, I'm going to turn it over to our two students, Tapia and Alicia. Hello. Um, so we're just gonna do some introductions first. So my name is Tapia. Um, I'm from Toronto. I did a undergrad at the University of Guelph in biomedical science. Um, and then I took a year off, worked in a research lab as a research assistant, and then applied to the MPATH program here at the University of Calgary. Yep, so my name's Alicia. I'm also from Toronto, Ontario. 
I did my undergrad at the University of Toronto in neuroscience. I also took a year off. I just worked uh, part-time to make some money. And then I applied to the empath program at the University of Calgary. Yeah, so we're just going to be talking about our experience as course-based students here and what we love about it because we're having a great time. <laughs> Um, so firstly, um, we love that our courses are extremely targeted and tailored to what we want to do in the future. So for the empath program, that's specifically becoming a pathologist assistant. Um, for the biotech program, it might be a little different, but um, still the courses directly translate to things that are going to be important for your future profession, which we absolutely loved. Um, secondly, there's a really strong hands-on component to the course-based programs. So even in our first year when we were um, uh, doing courses. just our courses, we still had a hands-on component. Um, and now in our second year, we're doing a whole practical year and obviously that's extremely hands-on. <laughs> um, so I like that because I'm personally a hands-on learner yeah. um, and it helps me solidify the information that we learn in our courses. Another great thing about our program is how small it is. There's only six students accepted per year to the empath program. So we have a little small tight knit community. We can support each other with our learning and we do get really close with each other as well as all of our trainers. We can build relationships that way. Um, and then another benefit for the program itself as uh, Dr. Beattie mentioned is that there's still a research element to our program. So in our second year, along with our practicum um, courses, we also work on a research project. Um, most of them either focus on pathological concepts or we do pathological education um, geared research. So right now my project, I'm creating standard operating procedures in educational videos for two rare pediatric pathologies. And oh, I'm looking at bone decalcification and optimizing that process. Yeah. And I believe the other programs also have a research based component. So if you're looking for both hands on and like research, uh, course based masters could be good for you. Yeah. Um, lastly, we'd like to talk about how COVID has affected us. Um, since the, our program is really small, we found that COVID hasn't affected us so much. We have a really great community like Alicia mentioned, so we've been able to support um, each other through this process. Um, and uh, our practicum hasn't been affected. So we're actually right now we're in the hospital. We are downstairs in the morgue. I'm in my scrubs. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we haven't been affected by COVID. We just follow the hospital protocols, which has been really awesome for our learning and our progression throughout our course based masters. Yeah. So yeah, if you have any questions for us feel later, free. feel free to ask. We also live on campus. So if you have any questions about being a graduate student living on campus, yeah. feel free to ask us that. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was great. Um, yeah, just to follow up on that, um, the MBT program has um, practicums and internships. Um, so has that practical aspect. And once you get to the master's level of the precision health program, there is um, what we're calling an experiential learning component. And that could be a research project, an internship, a practicum. It will very much be tailor, tailor made for the individual needs of the students, which is why we're calling it an experiential learning component and not pigeonholing it into one type um, to really look at what um, what the students need. Um, and yeah, really try to, to match students in our course based programs with those research practicum experiential learning opportunities that's going to further their professional career. So I see a couple of um, comments in the chat. Uh, one is from Mansoor um, asking about the immunology program. Um, and I see that uh, Marion, our team lead, has already um, responded to that. But I would encourage you, um, anyone who is interested, um, we are having a thesis-based webinar um, for our programs in on Wednesday, um, I believe. So please, um, if any of you are encouraged, to, uh, sorry, in, interested in any of our thesis-based programs or are trying to decide between a course-based program and a thesis-based program, please join us um, on Wednesday. So we are, I think that's the end of our formal um, presentation. So we have students here, members of my team here, members of the Faculty of Graduate Studies. So please, if you have any questions, 
um, now's the time to ask. Okay, so I've got a question here from Andrea asking how much tuition is for our programs. Um, so Andrea, I will point you to our graduate calendar um, that lists all of our tuition and fees and I will put the link to that in our chat. Um, hi, so we have a question from the, for the students, for us. Um, so for our program specifically, uh, we are training to become pathologist assistants. So our program's extremely uh, kind of tailored and we have a streamlined view of what we're doing. So um, yeah, we're training to become pathologist assistants. In the future, if we'd like to, there are opportunities for us to um, take our learning and apply it to education and work with programs that are training new pathologist assistants. We also assist with training pathology residents within the hospitals that we work at. Um, and we can also progress later on um, to supervisors or managers of pathology labs within the hospitals that we work at. Um, and I do have a question about how many students are admitted to the MBT program. Um, it's usually around 20 a year, um, give or take. Is it quite competitive to get into the empath program due to it being six students? Um, I would say by definition, yes. Um, <laughs> um, and we're hoping to grow that with partnerships. Um, so one of the reasons that the, the enrollment is so low is to ensure we have rich practicum experience is um, to, to our students. And right before COVID, um, we were looking at expanding some of those experiences outside of the province of Alberta. Oh, to, you want to say something, Leisha? Well, I was one of the students that was trying to go to Saskatchewan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then because of COVID, unfortunately, that didn't work out. Um, but hopefully in the near future, there will be more opportunities with that. Um, I know yeah. also just like if you are interested in this program, I would reach out to local hospitals or local um, medical examiners offices and just try to do some shadowing make sure you know what the role entails and then it'll help you a lot with your application. Oh, so there's a question in the chat about um, international students. Yes, absolutely. Um, international students are welcome to apply to our programs. Um, yeah. Uh, since the precision medicine program's master's component is pending, what would that mean if it isn't, isn't approved? Well, we would still have the certificate and diploma. Those are um, active and um, approved. Um, the reason that the master's program is not yet approved, I believe, is because the master's program goes to a different um, government body for approval than the certificate and diploma do. Um, so I don't I don't anticipate it being a problem. Um, and if it's not approved, we will have the opportunity to go back and revise our proposal um, to make it stronger based on government. So we've got two years to get that done. Um, are internships for the MBT program primarily based in Calgary? Yes, they are primarily based in Calgary, but we are looking to um, expand our partnerships um, to possibly um, be a little bit more outside of Calgary. But we did have a student um, last year or two years ago, I can't remember, um, um, who actually went down to San Francisco to participate in a practicum with iBiology. So um, if those, if those practicums can be found outside of the city, absolutely, we support our students to go out um, and do those. Are there any job prospects for international students in Canada after completing the MPATH program? So are you at, sorry, just to, just to clarify, an international student coming to Canada to do the MPATH program, and then if they, if once they graduate as international, um, can they, can they work in Canada? I'm just not sure if I understand the question thoroughly. If you just maybe want to take some clarification in the Q&A, that would be great. Um, I also see a question from Mansoor in the chat. Um, anyone from immunology faculty or students, uh, could you just clarify a little bit there, Mansoor, just uh, let us know a little bit more about what you're looking for in terms of an answer? Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna go back to the question about the empath program, I believe, and 
and and please um and we might want to contact the empath program director um uh, and um program administrator i believe that if you get educated and accredited in canada so long as you yourself meet work eligibility requirements to work in canada regardless of whether or not you're an international student your degree from canada would be recognized I can't speak to the immigration aspects of um, work in Canada, but from a credentialed perspective, it would be recognized. So for the immunology PhD program, please um, join us on Wednesday and we will be discussing all of the um, all of the um, requirements, admissions and opportunities for our thesis based programs, Mansoor. Uh, can you comment on funding scholarships um, if that is available to students and programs? So our course based programs do not have a lot of scholarship opportunities associated with them um, because they are course based and um, um, they're you, you pay for the courses that you that you are taking. Um, we do have some awards. Um, we have a couple of awards in the MBT program, and we do have a couple of awards um, pending that we're hoping to incorporate into our um, precision health program. But right now, those are, are, are limited um, for our course-based students. Anything um, else? Can yep. we just add one thing that we forgot to mention in our little <laughs> yeah, work? Absolutely. Um, so the because we're a NACLS accredited program, we're also affiliated with the American Association of Pathologist Assistants. And um, we have the opportunity to attend the annual conference each year that is held in the States. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID this year, it was canceled. We were supposed to go to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, um, but they still had online components for us. We still got to participate. Each student did a poster presentation and two students were selected as student delegates to, along with their poster, also write up a manuscript. So we did get the conference experience as well, even though it is a, co a course based program. Yeah, and um, if COVID wasn't a thing, it's a great opportunity for networking for future jobs. So that's why we wanted to tell you yeah. guys about it. <laughs> um, okay, are these programs um, given, do they give postgraduate work permit for international students? I don't have an answer to that. Calvin or Natalie from FGS, do you know the answer to that question? I do know that students can apply for postgraduate work permit once they have completed their degree. Um, and uh, we do have an international student services office on campus. Um, they have a very robust web page. Um, I would encourage you to take a look at that um, to, to get that information on immigration. Okay. Um, what is a competitive average for the MBT and MPATH programs? So that's really hard to say. Um, usually our graduate programs, you need a minimum of 3.3. Um, and because for both programs, there is a vision statement and a, and a bigger picture of why your, um, why you might be considering this program. So we don't just take the top 20 students that have the top GPA. Um, we do look at their, how it fits into their professional development plans, their future career goals, their vision for why they want to enter the program. So I don't actually feel comfortable saying what a competitive GPA is. Um, we've had students with, you know, closer to the 3.3, 3.4 GPA get accepted, um, as well as, you know, the 3.9. So, so we do have a more holistic approach to admissions. Um, so it, it's not a, oh, you've got a really good chance of getting in if you've got a 3.9, um, if you don't articulate your reasons for wanting to get to the program well. Um, so what is the difference between a course-based and a thesis-based graduate program? Okay, so our thesis-based graduate programs um, are largely research-intensive programs that you spend two to three years in a master's or four to five years doing a PhD generating novel research. And there are some courses that are affiliated with the thesis based programs, but largely you are working with an individual supervisor for an extended period of time to generate research knowledge in a specific field. 
our course based programs have much more courses um, and are even though we've talked about a research component, which we feel is really important, it is not the sole focus of the degree and it's not the sole focus of the program it's learning kind of textbook not textbook because they're far more than their graduate courses so they're at a higher level but kind of more course based knowledge with a research component as well and they tend to be shorter and quite frankly they tend to be a little bit more specific to a specific pro, uh, profession um, on the on the other side um, there is a question for Tapia and Alicia. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the Q&A, but I think you mentioned that you're from Toronto. What made you want to come to U of C rather than going to U of T for a similar program? Well, when we applied, first of all, U of T's program wasn't a program. It <laughs> just started this year. So uh, no, that wasn't an option for us. But also, um, so U of C is a NACLS accredited program, which means that we have the ability to work after we graduate here in Canada as well as the States. So that's just more job opportunities. And there is another NACLS accredited program at the University of Western as well. But um, I chose Calgary because I love the environment. I look, I want to be close to the mountains. Um, yeah. I really enjoyed the interview process and I felt like it was a really great community here. Mm -hmm. And the um, the job placement rate, which is 100% after the program was amazing. So <laughs> Um, that's why I chose to come to the University of Calgary. Do you have any? Just on top of that, because it is a NACLS accredited program, we are able to write the ASCP exam, which is a more, um, it's been around longer than the current Canadian exam, and it does provide you with certification in both Canada and America right now. So um, if we graduate from these programs, we can write both exams yeah. instead of just the Canadian exam. Um, it's just greater job prospects at this point. Anything else from anybody? We've got FGS here, we have students here, we have our team here. Um, and of course, if there's something that you think of that um, you would like to ask after this webinar, please uh, don't hesitate to, to reach out. Mary, maybe if you want to just put your um, email address or an appropriate email address in the chat, um, in case somebody feels more comfortable um, contacting you directly. Absolutely, I'll put up our GSE website as well that's got the information about all of our programs. That's great, thanks Marianne. Yep. Well, if there are no further questions or comments, I'll just uh, let Marianne type some things into the chat. Thank you everyone for attending. I hope that you found this useful and informative and hopefully we will see some of you at the University of Calgary um, either online or in person um, next September. Great, thank you. Uh, I think it, it was very informative. I think um, we'll send on another invitation for the Pieces Space uh, webinar happening on Wednesday. So if you haven't registered for that, please do so. Uh, a couple of things with core space and thesis space as well. Core space is sort of considered a final degree as well. So if you're a student that that, that is considering maybe moving on to a PhD afterwards, um, you'll be looking at maybe doing a thesis based uh, research degree. And and a little bit about Calgary as well. We're not as as expensive as, as Toronto. So when you look at the cost of living as well, uh, when you do your graduate degree, that's one factor to consider as uh, because you're not being funded uh, by this program and there's no scholarships available. So you have to take into account what your living expenses would be. Tuition uh, as well um, would be another factor. We're not as expensive as University of Toronto or uh, UBC, but you still get the high level of education. We still support our students from the time they, they apply to, all the way to when they graduate. Natalie works with my grad skills. They put on a lot of great workshops. Um, they have an internship program as well offered through my grad skills. There's a lot of different clubs, activities, uh, events happening at the University of Calgary. There's a lot of strong community spirit. So when you walk around the halls, you'll see a lot of students wearing University of Calgary t-shirts, um, sweaters, dino gear. So you see that students have a lot of pride <laughs> at becoming a, a University of Calgary student. Um, we're also very close to the mountains. Uh, we're only an hour and a half away. So students that, that haven't been to Banff National Park or the Rocky Mountains, uh, would do that on their day off. 
on, on the weekend. You can also rent equipment from the university. So it's a very convenient place if you don't have hands, uh, snowmobile gear or uh, skis, you can rent it from the university, drive out there with your friends and spend a weekend hiking, camping. Uh, it's one thing to see it in pictures. Uh, I think you might've seen it through some of the presentation, but it's another thing to kind of experience it as well. So, you know, you, you focus on your studies, but there's a lot of different things around Calgary uh, that you can do on your off time just to keep yourself motivated and sane. Yeah. Oh, there's another, qu another question happening here. So the question is, how can students register for upcoming webinars? I have no idea. I'm going to pass that along to the people that that uh, know far more about this than I do. So Natalie and Cal, do you, uh, do you take up? Oh, there we go. So please send me an email, uh, future.grad at ucal.ca, and I'll add you onto the list, uh, or I'll send you the uh, invitation link to register for the thesis space. Uh, programs. Thanks, Cal. Maybe a, a lot of questions um, that I get from international students is what's the um, class going to be like uh, come fall? And we, we don't know what that's going to yeah. be like, if it's going to be online or if it's going to be in person. I'm not sure if Tara or Marion or Miranda have a little bit more information on that. No. No decisions have been made yet. Um, well, we can speak to what the, the first years in our program are doing currently. And um, there's a, basically what they're doing is a mixture of online and in-person classes. So most of the classes that can be online are online. And then we have classes in our first year, such as anatomy that has a dissection component. So for that, they are coming in person and doing the dissection component. So I can answer right now for the MBT program. Um, there are some components that are in person and some components that are online. There's a lab component the, into the MBT program that is currently going on in person. Um, and then there's a couple other, and I don't know off the top of my head, but there are other couple of face-to-face -face in person um, classes going on, um, but then there's also some online. Um, the Precision Health Program is for 2021 going to be all online. Um, we've made that decision, but going forward, it's actually designed as, as a blended model of in-person um, and online, mostly online um, to facilitate accessibility of this program for the target audience that we're trying to reach. Um, but for 2021, all of the courses will be online. Um, just given the uncertainty of, of what's going on. And since it's a largely online program anyway, um, that's where we're gonna go for the first year. And questions that I, I sometimes get is, how long does it take for a program to make a decision when a student applies? Um, you know, Marion, if you, if you wanna comment on that, that's, if you yeah. can. <laughs> Um, sure. So the process, I guess, um, is that once the applications close, our GPAs need to spend time compiling all of the documents for every student's file. And then we send them off to an adjudication committee, um, which is a group of faculty uh, associated with the program. So I can't give hard timelines, but I can tell you that we do have a process um, and uh, we try and get an answer back to students as quickly as we can. We can just say based on our experience with it, our application was due March 30th. Um, and then we heard about potential interviews in May. Yeah. In May. And then we did our interview and we knew by the beginning of June if we were in or not. So it was pretty quick, I would say. That's great. Um, do you need to find a supervisor before applying to one of these programs? Not, not for the course-based programs. And for all of the course-based programs, there are people to help find practicums and help find practicum placements or research placements. Um, so you don't have to do that completely on your own. Uh, for our program, for the research component, we got a list of potential topics that we could do with the respective pathologists that we could be working with if they did involve a pathologist. And we were just um, given the choice to name which one we wanted to do, and then we were connected that way. So it was 
very uh, we were very helped with that process. It wasn't up to us at all, really. <laughs> And the MBT program has a practicum coordinator that helps students find placements for MBT. And once we get to that aspect of the precision health program, there will also be a practicum experiential learning coordinator to help identify opportunities for the students. And uh, I'll keep the questions going. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes uh, for students coming from undergrad or from international background and they come and study here, um, they ask how, how do students, maybe this is a question for our student panelists, how do you keep a, a work-life balance? You know, how do you focus on your studies and yet have time to do your other things? And how demanding are, is the coursework? Good question. Uh, <laughs> how to... Um... <laughs> well, okay, so... Um... I guess we lucked out because Tappy and I both lived on residence, so it was easy for us to kind of just find friends and hang out pretty easily because we were in the same building. Um, we also, there's, I think half of us in the first year held part-time jobs um, outside of schoolwork as well, and that was pretty manageable. Um, during the second year when you start your practicum, it's a little harder just because you're working at the hospital for eight hours a day, Monday to Friday. So even finding a place that wants to hire you can be difficult. Um, but I don't know, we do stuff on the weekends, um, the classes, as long as you keep up with readings, go to your lectures, which you kind of have to, there's only six people, you can't, you're not going to skip out <laughs> on these courses. Um, <laughs> it's not too bad. Um, I would say as long as you like you did your undergrad, it's not crazy difficult compared to your undergrad courses. It's just more tailored to what you're actually interested in what you're going to school for now. Um, so I think maintaining the balance isn't too bad. No, I think it's yeah. fine. Um, and then the uh, GSA, which is the Graduate Student Association, yep. uh, <laughs> <laughs> they offer a bunch of events for grad students that help you network and meet new people yep. and, um, uh just help with that work-life balance which is awesome and there's um, still a bunch online right now yeah. and then we actually have the residence ones which are nice too that are yeah. still going on so it's it's been fine for us yeah is the uh, practicum practicum paid or no it's unpaid um we're paying to do it <laughs> so it's part of our program fees but um it's more we're not at the level where we could be technically considered employees yet. Everything we do, we have to ask our trainer or multiple trainers, and it's just really hands-on learning experience and providing us with those skills that we'll need for our job in the future. Um, I don't know if this will be something that happens other years, but we were able to apply for a casual position that they're offering at the hospital this year. Um, we haven't heard back about that yet, we've tried to apply. Um, we're in the applicant pool of anybody else who wanted to apply to it, but we were just given the opportunity to see if we could do that to supplement our learning. And it would be working on the weekends instead of our training during the week kind of thing. And um, I guess some of the questions that, that might come up uh, for Marion as well, and maybe Miranda, when students are applying and they're and they're asking for references, do you prefer academic references, professional references? Uh, what kind of references do you recommend students have when applying to the course-based programs? Well, I guess I can answer that. Um, we recommend that students can use an academic reference if possible, but if they don't have two references who are academic, um, they need to basically ask someone who can speak to their ability to undertake graduate studies, their suitability for the program, um, and any experience that they might have had that could relate to the program as well. We have uh, all the questions uh, answered. That's great. So thank you so much, everybody, for, for attending our webinar. Again, uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be uh, uploaded onto our YouTube channel. Uh, so if you want to review any of the information that was presented, uh, that'll be great. And we'll send out an invitation to the thesis-based program webinar uh, for Wednesday, uh, later on this afternoon. If there's anything else you want to add, please go ahead. If there's any last minute questions, you can send ask now or send it to
future.grad at ucalgary.ca or to uh, Marion, she's picked, posted her email. Oh, question just popped up. Would you recommend undergraduate students to get involved in research before applying to graduate program? Is there any difference between the research components of the two programs? Um, I, I don't, sorry, I don't think that doing research is absolutely required, um, but it always helps. Um, there's always, you know, there's going to be some skills that you've learned and most science degrees um, have some kind of research component to them in their, in their undergraduate. Um, are there any differences between the research components in the two programs? So yes, so the research component, and I'll let the, the students talk a little bit more about their specific um, pr projects if they want, but really the research and the practicum component of the MBT is really about bridging the business world and the biotechnical world. So how does the scientific world intersect with um, business, entrepreneurship, pharma, that kind of aspect. Um, so the practicums are very, um, are, are a little bit more um, practical in experience. Um, and then Tapia and Alicia, if you wanna talk about maybe the research side of, of your projects. Sure. Okay, um, so from what, we've experienced uh, the projects can go down two routes, basically. Um, our empath program, it's still kind of in its infancy uh, as a graduate student program. Um, so there's a lot of projects that are geared towards adapting some of the coursework in the first year of the program and just supplementing that with different um, projects. So there was one year, one student did a small groups project where the students would be given a PowerPoint of different pathologies, different um, his, histological, Im uh, <laughs> sorry, images, and um, they would have to do their research on their own and then present it to each other as a way to um, supplement their learning. The one that I'm doing this year is about um, two rare pediatric pathologies, and we only have a month at Alberta Children's Hospital, and it's hard to see all the specimens that we could encounter in our job if we do end up working in a pediatric center. Um, so this would just help have additional educational material on the side that PAs, pathology residents and students could review to supplement the um, practicum. And then you're on the other route. Yeah, so the other route is more of a traditional, I guess you could say research project where you have an actual study that you're performing and you know change variables and that kind of thing. So what I'm looking at specifically is um, how long it takes to properly decalcify bone. And basically what that means is bone's really hard. You need to cut it for histological sections. So you need a way to make it soft. Enough to um, cut it, yeah. Enough to cut. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you uh, leave it in that medium for too long, it, things go awry. So we need a perfect timing for it. And that's what I'm trying to figure <laughs> out. Um, so yeah, so there's those two methods. We both did research, neuroscience research in, um, our undergrad. in our undergrad. And then I did it for a year after my undergrad. Um, I wouldn't say that you need it. There's people in our program that don't have any research experience and are doing just Great. fine. Um, obviously it has helped with some soft skills, I'll say. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it's not necessary at all. I wouldn't like go do a research project just to get into. No, the and there's program. a lot of support during this research project that we're doing. We have our immediate supervisor, the course coordinator of the research project itself, and then also your individual supervisors working on the project with you. And it's very collaborative. And I feel like you'd have enough support even if you didn't have um, a concrete like research experience prior to this. Thank you so much. I think applications are now open for the two programs. Um, the deadlines uh, probably differ for each program. So I encourage you to visit the uh, coming School of Medicine website to make sure you don't miss the deadline. Um, Marianne, Miranda, if you have anything else to add, uh, Natalie, let us know. Nothing to add, um, but I just do want to say thank you to all the attendees for coming today, and hopefully we will be speaking to you a little bit more in the future. Yeah. Great. So thank you, everybody. If you have any further questions, please email us. Uh, if not, uh, we hope to see you at the thesis-based webinar. Uh, the invitations, again, will be sent out uh, later on this afternoon. Thank you, uh, Dr. Beattie, and thank you to our student team. 
and to the uh, QSE for attending this, uh, for hosting this webinar. Take care, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thanks.